This is our first podcast. Yep. Um, obviously, we need to discuss the sad tragedy of Robin Williams. Right. Um, well, that's a horrible way to start a podcast. I series. know. Well, you know, we were supposed to start last week, and so we, you know, our second podcast would be about that. But unfortunately, I had a wedding or a birthday. I mean. So yeah, as everybody knows, Robin Williams has passed away. He mm-hmm. unfortunately he committed suicide, and it turns out he had depression, and he also had early stages of Parkinson's. Parkinson's. Yep. I don't think, other than a couple of trolls on the internet, I don't think I've seen anything. No, I think he was universally loved, man. Even for even though we had a few movies and things that were kind of dumb, I mean, for the most part, the guy was just a stand-up guy. I mean, he was a cyclist that did a lot of things uh, to benefit people, and he saw footage of him. Going across the finish line in a, I think it was a triathlon, I'm not sure, but um, running across with a handicapped guy, and just, uh, I don't know, just everything he did seemed to be from the heart. Yeah, know? I mean, and he did, a, I know he did a lot of USO tours, he'd go, yep, over, you know, that's right. to Iraq. He didn't really and, talk about it either. No, he just did it, yeah, yeah, he, it was never, a, it was never a publicity stunt yeah. with him, it was always just, I'm gonna go do this, go support it, I think he, he recognized that he had a gift, and he liked sharing that gift with people. And I think just being a, a celebrity in itself was just kind of a after, you know, it was just kind of a, just something that kind of happened with him as opposed to a goal in his life. Because again, hmm. you know, if you have somebody like, I'm sure like if Kim Kardashian went overseas, she'd brag about it. She'd probably bring TMZ with her. Yeah, she wouldn't do it unless she made money off of it. Right. And, and Robin Williams was, you know, going out of his way to do it. I remember... Um, Right after 9-11 happened, I remember People Magazine or, or Newsweek or some magazine, you know, they obviously had photos of the tragedy. And I remember one of the one of the photos in there was Robin Williams down there donating blood. Really? Yeah. I saw that. Yeah. Uh-huh. Um, and, and so it's just things like that where it's just like, and I'm sure his public, like I'm sure he didn't call his publicist and was just like, hey, let's make this a photo op. I'm sure, you know, there was a million news news stations the whole around. Thing was a photo I mean, right. Yeah, I mean, so I, a yeah. So I, I think, I think him donating blood wasn't, wasn't so he could be seen donating blood for the nine eleven victims and, and for the people that needed it at the time. It was, he was just donating blood because he's just a good person. There just happened to be a photographer who recognized him and snapped that photo. Yeah. Yep. Um, so sadly he will be missed. I feel bad for his family. Obviously it's, uh, never an easy thing to lose anybody to death, especially when you're talking about suicide. Um, and a man who's, you know, so beloved and, and 63 years old. Uh, but I think that kind of proves the point that money doesn't buy happiness. Yeah, you know you what, know? too? I would say this. I think it's sad for us, and obviously mostly for his family. Um, but, you know, when you, when you find out what was wrong with the guy, depression-wise, and the early stages of Parkinson's, and the fact that he's such an animated person, and that's who he was, and, and the fact that Parkinson's would just completely take that away. You know, on, on, on one level, I just kind of feel like, you know, it's probably made a decision that he probably thought about real well. I'm not trying to put thoughts in his head or anything, but, you know, he... I mean, maybe that was the right thing for him to do. I mean, he's not going to get stuck through a whole bunch of years of you know, right. feeling trapped in his body and all that. Right, and, and definitely not the right thing to do in, in the sense of, like, it's justified, but but in his mind with everything that he was going through, you know, when people say, like, so, suicide is a selfish act, I'm sure that that, I'm sure that that final decision was not made lightly. I'm sure that, you know, and again, battling depression in itself yeah. is, you know, you know, you talk to people who have depression, and it's it's described in ways that a lot of people can't understand because they don't have depression they've never experienced it and so when you have people that are like oh it's 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 selfish that they did this it's like well you know it, it's controlled by the brain and the brain is an organ and if the brain isn't releasing the chemicals it needs to it's going to cause depression it's not a simple thing like oh, well, i shouldn't be depressed today so therefore yeah, right i'm going to oh, just smile. cheer up yeah, up. it's, yeah, it's, it's, it's not that easy i mean the, the yeah. brain is the brain releases serotonin serotonin helps keep you happy and if your serotonin levels aren't where they need to be that's where depression comes into play. And I know with Parkinson's, uh, Parkinson's will also block the serotonin release, which, out, which you know, will add to depression. And so when you right. already have depression, which, you know, it's not a secret he had it. He was open about, yeah, for you know, a, for his decades. struggles. And, yeah. yeah, I mean, um, and 
of his addiction as you know when he was younger and you know yeah, I, I think, think I relapse think, a few years yeah I th- I, yeah. yeah so definitely don't want to spend the whole show on yeah. on Robin I mean we, we definitely miss him I found myself tearing up at times even though I didn't I've never even met the man um and and my heart goes out to his friends and family it, it's a it's a tragic loss and he will definitely be missed yeah I don't know what else to say I agree he's uh usually when these things pop up I'm just like why is everybody so sad you know the person <laughs> what did they ever right. do good for the world but this is a, an exception to that absolutely and somebody who did a lot of good things and so selfishness is exactly the wrong word to use about the guy um, it's better just to remember everything that he contributed and yep. call it good with that so with that sad somber note we're gonna go into our first podcast um, so so the purpose of this is obviously I am a geek and a nerd at heart. Lee is also a geek and nerd, and I'm never going to run away from that. I've always embraced it, even <laughs> as a kid. Um, and I think I grew up in a time where, where you know, the, the nerds were starting to become more... Acceptable. More acceptable. Yeah, they've gotten over the whole uh, <laughs> uh, nerd movies in the 80s. Right, right, right. right. Yeah. right. So, yeah. you know, when I was, you know, I was in elementary in the 80s, you know, and Nintendo came out, and comic books, and... And at that point, I think I, I kind of lucked out. Um, so I grew up in the, in, in the world of superheroes and, and Nintendo games and board yep. games and Dungeons and & Dragons and, and all those things that I think the generation before us was probably like, nerd. Yeah, totally. <laughs> Although I will say this. Th- the reason why I got into that stuff in the first place is cause, because my dad would give me comic books and stuff when I was a kid. There was definitely, I don't know if you want to call it nerds, more like geeks or something, right. way back, you know, way back, way back. And it probably had like a uh, a couple of different renaissances, and I think we're, we're, we're in one again right now. You know, I think it's uh, it's acceptable, almost to the point of tedium in some ways. You know, it's a little bit like too prevalent in a way. Yeah, I, I mean, I, I, I could accept yeah. that. I mean, I, I think it's definitely getting bigger yeah. Um, but I'm okay with that. I would rather yeah, accessibility yeah. comes along with that, right? And so. I'd rather I'd rather that be the mainstream than you well, know I don't I don't even know. I, I I guess I guess again like I grew up into the nerd culture and away from you know jocks without trying to to attack anybody who might be listening. And so I'd rather have the nerd culture be be the prevalent rather than. You know, you gotta win. You gotta win. But it's just like let's just all go play video games and <laughs> board games and and dress up like wizards and play Dungeons and Dragons and roll our twelve sided die. T- totally. <laughs> uh, there's there's definitely a place for that. It's just from the escapist perspective. I also think um, the two things are not mutually exclusive. I mean, um, think about a guy like Bill Gates who probably really helped nerds and geeks kind right. of get into the mainstream. And that guy is definitely. You know, quote unquote winner, right? Of course, you know, of course. Driven, driven kind of guy, but also a geek, right? You know, and definitely a nerd. And I also, and I also want to elaborate, right? So I, I've also heard that Vin Diesel is actually a, a, a huge D and D and a huge D and D player. I think he did the pre the preface of one of the D and D, right? Yeah. And I, you know, I, I don't think anybody out there is going to say that Vin Diesel is definitely not toned or to quote unquote what you might consider like a jock standard. I mean, the guy is yeah, yeah. obviously very well built and. And again, he's a very cool guy who just happens to like yeah. cool, absolutely cool outside of the nerd norm. And within the nerd norm, he's also an awesome guy because he plays D and D, and he just happens to right. to be a man who plays D and D. He's right. also muscle. Yeah, same with the Rock. You know, yeah, like, big, obviously <laughs> like the biggest guy on movies. You know, right now, physically, um, maybe also somewhat in character, but um, you know, big big into comic books and stuff. And I think he's probably, I mean, that guy would fit so many roles. Right. Um, that's part of it, right? I mean, part of the whole thing is that you want to be, um, you want to escape and be like this bigger than life kind of character and stuff. And right. so those people who actually embody that and are both, I think is, is really, really kind of interesting. Right. And, and, and with that, I mean, these guys are also now being cast in these, right? I mean, absolutely. Now, Vin Diesel. Now, granted, Vin Diesel did the voice for Groot. Yeah. Um, but if you look at, the, if you watch the behind the scenes, he's, you know, he's on still. It's like he he tried to embrace that character as much as he could. 
even though he's only doing voice acting. I, I haven't seen that. He's on still yeah, he, getting into the character. Yeah. <laughs> wow. <laughs> um, and then I think The Rock just got signed on for Rumor is Shazam, right? Well, uh, yeah, I don't know. Is that official yet? I mean, I don't know. I think it might even be Black Adam, which would even, even or be Black cool. Adam, yeah. right? But it's still Similar, it's still yeah. the same the yeah. same comic comic, yeah. right? So still, yeah. I mean, and again, that hasn't been announced yet. I mean, the, the only thing he said is, was he? I think I think he leaked it saying Shopkins. one word. Yeah. Which would be right. Shazam. Right, right, right. right. I mean, I, I don't know if Black Adam has any magical words. So that, Shazam. Right? Yeah. <laughs> so, so yeah, I, you know, you are going to see, again, you're going to see more of these, these predominantly giant movie stars that come from, again, The Rock comes from wrestling, and, and Vin Diesel comes from, you know, what was his first I movie? Mean, I mean, you know, Pitch... pitch Pitch Black, Black maybe? I mean, I don't, I'm not sure, you know, and then that's did the, what I saw him first. You know, then he, he obviously became a star with uh, Fast, and Fast and Furious, yeah. um, which again is, it's the cool guys on the on the street, you know, it's, it's the geeks of the street. Yeah, it's definitely right? the geek culture of the Yeah, song. definitely, yeah. I mean, it's definitely the geeks of the street, yeah. and, the, and Fast and the Furious made street racing cool. I remember... Um, I used to have a, a souped-up Integra right before that movie. It. Right before that movie came out, <laughs> and I remember the the day that movie came out, I sat Seven Eleven. I hadn't seen the movie yet, and I was at Seven Eleven, and these kids rolled up in their their Honda Civic DX with a with an exhaust tip. They even had the exhaust system on it, just the exhaust <laughs> tip, and they came up to me and they, they're like, "Do you want to race?" I was like, "What?" And and. And again, this is the day of. I mean, so you, you knew that these guys just saw Fast and the Furious. They went out and bought the, the they $10 went out and bought, tip. Yeah, they bought, and bought the $10 tip. And, um, but after that, like, shortly after that, you started seeing a ton of import racers on the street. Yeah. And multiple times people tried to race me. And I'm like, first off, my car is not fast. It's an Integra, right? <laughs> like, it's not, it's not turbocharged. It's not supercharged. I don't have nitrous on this thing. I don't know what you're expecting out of me. For a lot of like, I had Mitsubishi Eclipses that were that were turbo tires that wanted to that wanted to race me. And then I also had Honda Civic DXs where I was just like, okay, my car's not fast, <laughs> but my car it would blow yours away. Yeah. Because of the fact that you're driving a DX that has like a 92 horsepower engine. Stock, yeah. To be that, fair, some of those probably could blow a lot of cars away because <laughs> that was part of the. the the, the uh, interest in those is that it was, the they were sleepers. cheap. Yeah, and then you could just make them. Make them sleepers, sleepers. yep. Yeah. yeah. Um, so I know it was a few weeks. I went to Comic-Con this year. You didn't go to Comic-Con this year. No, nope, I was a big loser. Um, I, was a, I was a nerd out of the nerds. Didn't so I made it to preview night, which was actually a lot nicer than last year. Because last year, if you remember, you couldn't even walk the floor on preview yeah. night. It was so bad. But I went and saw the preview for Constantine and the Flash, and... I like Constantine. I don't want to get too much into it because, you know, one of my good friends is in this show and I don't want to be... I don't want to be what Kevin Smith is to Batman versus Superman <laughs> because I feel like, although Kevin Smith is definitely a huge comic book fan with the rest of us, I think that he's also biased because his best friend is totally. playing Batman. Yeah. And so I don't want to be like, oh, you should go... Constantine's the best thing in the world because, again, one of my best friends is, is playing Chaz in the series. And so I think that I lose any kind of credibility in that. Yeah. So I will plug the show, Constantine's, uh, October 24th <laughs> on NBC. Um, it does look awesome. But I'm not going to go around, uh, you won't hear me saying it's the best show out there, and, and I won't go out there really talking too much about it um, because of because of the connection that I have with it. However, with The Flash, I did see The Flash, and if you do watch Arrow, it is in the same universe. Right. Um, now, nothing I'm going to say is... is Anything that is inside information, it's, it's again. I saw the I saw the pilot. And I don't want to give away any spoilers either, um, but you do see the origin of the Flash. I can tell you, it is Barry Allen, right? So it's not Wally. Um, they do a couple cool things in there. Uh, there's when he starts getting his powers and they start to develop. Uh, it, it starts to come kind of naturally to him without him realizing it. So things are happening, and he and he questions why they're happening. Um, but then there's other times where it's an involuntary muscle, and it didn't really work for me. Yeah. Um, yeah, I get that. 
Like it was like a reflex. Yeah, like yeah. like like something happens and he goes into the mode and and you'll see. I mean, when you watch the show, you'll see. Um, but I think overall, I think I think the pilot they're trying to figure out who their audience is because again, it feels like at some points it feels like they're trying mm. trying to target the the Arrow audience. Yeah. Which, if you ask me, who the Arrow audience was, I'd say probably like young twenties up. Right, I don't know yeah, if it's really a teenager show. Probably not like the the you know the geeks of the geeks either. Right, probably a little right, more right. Mainstream than that. Um, with the Flash, I felt like it was kind of trying to appeal to a younger audience, but then mm. it also has people getting shot with blood going out of their bodies, just like an arrow. So I'm not really sure. I I, I think huh. I think they'll figure it out though. I mean, I think with all pilots, they're always usually kind of rough because they have to the whole goal of the pilot is to sell it to network right and then network say okay we like the show and then at that point they kind of get more freedom to m- sure to make it work right um and I, you know to, for your description though i mean it, it having like sort of teenager themes or something but then also like blood and stuff that fits well into the dc universe i think anyway i mean yeah that's how dc is you know no and, and absolutely yeah. I, and i i again it's hard to explain without giving away any spoilers yeah, and again i, I don't it. want to start saying like well this happens right because even giving away a minor spoiler on something that people have, that majority of people haven't had the opportunity to see, yeah, um, I don't think that that'd be fair. So it's definitely something that we can right. revisit uh, once the pilot actually airs, and and we can go in and talk about it. And um, I will say I did like the twist at the end. Um, it, it sets up it sets up a whole larger uh, story storyline. Yeah. Story yeah, yeah. I mean, so. Uh, Batman vs Superman was obviously there. I did not make it into Hall H. However, I have seen the leaked right. trailer. Did you see the leaked? I trailer? did. Yeah, saw saw it from several angles. <laughs> <laughs> so, what are your thoughts on that? Uh, you know, I, first first of all, let me say that I had some ambivalence toward uh, Gal Gadot being Wonder Woman. I think she's too thin. You know, she's from Fast and Furious. Speaking mm-hmm. of which, yes. Um, but then when I saw the the, uh, the footage of her, I thought she looks awesome as Wonder Woman. I think they did a really good job with the costume, too. And the sword is there, which is good. Right. You know, Got to have that sword. I think it gets lost in some of the older Wonder Woman stuff, you know. Right. Um, so she looks very Olympian or whatever. Um, and the uh, you know the rest of the footage I saw, it's sort of kind of what I expected. Um, y- you know, I think... Um, yeah, I don't know how I, how I feel about Batman's costume in, okay. in this newer one. It looks a little, I don't know, it looks like a S&M fucking, <laughs> you know. <laughs> I don't know what it looks like. It looks like it's made out of latex rubber and that you buy it at the uh, one of the sex shops in West Hollywood or something. <laughs> it looks a little weird to me. Um, you know, Superman looks cool. Yeah. Um, the only thing I've ever had wrong with that Superman is I don't think his body proportions quite look right. You know, they don't, they don't, and the reason I'm talking about the physical, like the visual attributes, is because there's not really enough going on, I think, in the, the leaked footage to re- really get an idea of the larger picture of the film. You know what yeah, I mean? Yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah. and and my my cons- I don't want to say concerns. Where I'm where I'm confused about, I guess, or or why I'm curious is, you know, when they announced it last year, they they read the line from The Dark Knight Rises or The Dark Knight Returns, uh, where he says, you know, remember Clark, I'm the one who had yeah, my, I, I'm straight the out of Dark Knight Returns, right? Yeah. I mean, and, and and so they indicate like it's going to be a Dark Knight Returns esque story. Yeah. Um, fast forward a year, we know it's Batman versus Superman. It's called VV or Batman v Superman. Yeah. Like it's a court case. Um, and then you know they they show the footage where it's it's Batman clearly in the armored bat suit from Dark Knight Returns, and he's turning on the he turns on his own spotlight the bat yeah the bat lamp to get, turn on the bat signal and you see Superman up in the air with his glowing red eyes and right. then you see Batman with his glowing blue eyes right. and it kind of breaks away and, and then that's when it cuts yeah. and, so, and then everybody claps and everybody's happy. My, where I'm at is, is one, is this, is this Batman? Or, or is this Dark Knight Returns? Because it's, it's we know it's not, but at the same time, it's, it, there, you pulled out an, an exact quote last year. And then this year you've got two costumes that are pretty much from, right? I mean, his regular costume has the short ear, the ones that when he's standing yeah. by the Batmobile. I mean, Even the, the angle of the eyes is kind of similar yeah. and stuff. Yeah, totally. And then, and then, yeah. and then in the, in the, the leaked footage, he's also wearing the armored suit, which yeah. he wears in Dark Knight 
Dark Knight Returns when he battles Superman, right? Because you can't just battle Superman in your regular armor. You're going to get killed. Yeah, not if you're Batman. Right. Well. Not if you're human. Yeah. Um, so I don't, I don't, and again, I haven't seen any scripts, so I, obviously, this is all speculation. I just, I'm curious how it all fits in, because at the end of Man of Steel, he's not exactly buddy-buddy with America, right? He destroys the satellite and he says, quit yeah, spying on me. what they say, like, a hundred billion dollars in damage or something like that from his little battle. <laughs> yeah, I mean, and yeah. and yeah, they yeah, quit spying on me. At yeah, the end. quit spying. But it was also a little playful, like they had like a, a, a kind of a somewhat of a relationship right. going on, right? But not necessarily like, hey, we're allies now or something. Right, and and yeah. I guess that's that's kind of where it might right because because you know, and again, maybe maybe I'm wrong in using the Dark Knight Returns as as any kind of source material, but in the Dark Knight Returns, he's buddy buddies with the president. And the president says, hey, Batman's up to no good. Yeah, Ronald, oh. Ronald Reagan, by right, the way. Right, yeah. right, Ronald Reagan. But, you know, we're talking, you know, I don't want to say Ronald Reagan because we have Barack Obama. We don't have yeah. Ronald Reagan it anymore. Would, the, those things wouldn't make sense anymore. Because exactly. Of, yeah. Um, so he then says, go stop, Super, or go stop Batman. He's returned. And he's, he's, he's being an asshole, basically. And so that's what ultimately leads to Superman going to Gotham to fight Batman. Yeah, essentially. Yeah. Um, I don't see how the ending of Man of Steel equates to Such Superman idea. being friends with the president and going to Gotham, because it's not happening in in Metropolis. Like, yeah. The bat signal is clearly in Gotham. He turns it on, and Superman's there. So the I'm I'm confused, and I'm I'm curious as to. Why? I guess I just don't even really expect that to be a, a part of the storyline, but maybe it will be. I don't know. I, if the, if they're in opposition somehow, I have a feeling it'll be for for different reasons. You know how Batman is for right. one thing. If you come into his and come into Gotham, even if you're another superhero, right? Uh, he doesn't want you there. Of course, you know, depending on the, the character, specific Batman character. But you know, maybe it's something like that. I don't know. Maybe they're, maybe they're both ambivalent to each other. They don't know who is doing what. You right. know. Um, it, maybe maybe it has to do with Wonder Woman. I don't know. Right, I mean, and that could be, or or maybe or maybe that footage is absolutely nothing other than San Diego Comic Con footage to excite the fans, and it's yeah. not even going to be used at all. Yeah, or totally taken out of context. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Um. So rumor is Jason uh, Momoa is going to be Aquaman. Yep. And it came out this week. Um, I don't know if it's been confirmed or not, but there's a lot of rumors coming out this week that Aquaman is actually going to get his own movie. Yeah. As well. Is that on the official DC list or is it just somewhere I, well, in the Well, I don't know if I don't even know what that DC film. list is. I think it's in the untitled murky. <laughs> okay. Uh, and I don't know if this is there anything even official after JLA. Yeah, I think there. I think, I think there it's was. like JLA and then murky, murky, murky. Oh, murky. right. No. Yeah, they're all just unnamed. <laughs> right. Thing. Right. Yeah. Un- I think one of them might say like unnamed. Team up or something yeah, like that. That's about as detailed Superman. as it gets. I mean, we know yeah. there's going to be another man. We know there's yeah. going to be another Man of Steel yeah. and Man of Steel Two, and it's safe to assume there's going to be another Batman movie. Um, because yes. why not? The most popular character. Around. So, yeah. so let's let's talk about that. What would you want to see out of a Batman film? Out of the next Batman film, what do you want to see? Oh, you know what would be really cool? I think is uh, Red Sun. Okay. Um, because it's a totally different take than what's been done before. I don't know if they would do it as a live action movie. That's that's probably kind of reach in here but it, definitely they could do it as an animated film but but just that storyline would be really really cool because it flips everything on its head right. you know um it, and uh oh you said you said batman i said batman but oh, I'm I'm you said go superman. superman okay no, no, well no. we'll go superman um with the batman ones no i just would like to see a straight adaptation of dark knight returns i mean why bother with all this uh you know um uh saying that it's an inspiration for it or something like that you know i don't i don't quite get that and why do you have to have i mean i know they're behind and they're trying to catch up with marvel but why do you have to have this whole um immediate kind of interaction between batman and superman i mean why why can't batman have his own origin story in this new yeah and and, and i don't know if you like i don't know if you necessarily need an origin story for for batman i i think i think what needs to be established in, in batman versus superman um, is that he's been around for a while because we know it's an older Batman. And we need to know, is it a situation like Dark Knight Returns where Batman has gone into retirement and comes back? Yeah. Or is he always 
been around. I mean, it came out this week also that he's playing uh, young to mid forties. So we're looking at like forty four year old Batman. Yeah, and Dark Knight Returns, Returns Batman was like sixty. Yeah, he's right? like fifty five, yeah. sixty. So, yeah. so it's not quite there. And setting up Justice League and and I don't know if you would need a Dark Knight Returns because if they're battling each other at the end, why would they team up um, to to create yeah, the Justice true. League? Yeah. Um, what I want to see out of a Batman movie, and I, I don't feel like we've really gotten that, is you know Batman is known as the world's best detective, and we haven't really seen that. Other than, you know, they, they do it briefly in in The Dark Knight, right? Where he, he collects the the shell casing and then he puts it back together. Yeah, right. And they right. scan for the, thing, for the fingerprint. I think that whole, that whole aspect of Batman has kind of gotten shrunken down over the last... Right. E- even since the Burton films, you know? I mean, right. it's been shrunk. It, that, that was definitely more prevalent in the older Batman comics. And, and, you know, even in the 60s... The TV show, they were doing all kinds of detective right. work, even if it was campy. Right, know? right. Yeah. That's an interesting thought. Um, yeah, that, that would be an interesting way to do it. It would de- definitely be different than what they have in the last I mean, and I, and I don't know if anybody's been, like, so So Detective Comics, uh, they just did an, the Icarus, the Icarus drug run, which was, like, f- I think four or five issues. And they they brought that aspect back into Batman, where there's a lot of detective work involved with figuring out where the drugs are coming from, who has them. I've heard that about Why it. they're there. Yeah. And, you know, when I was reading that, I was just like, well, you know, this is actually really interesting. And, I, and then I thought about it. It's like, well, how come we're not getting that out of Batman? Because Batman was always... Batman, when he was created by, by Bill Finger and, and Bob Kane, was the world's greatest detective. Right. And you don't really get that. You get... I'm a brawler, which is, I guess that's actually Bob Kane's original version. No, right? if, I'm, if, I'm even in that very first comic book, though, he, like, throws a dude off a roof and kills him. Right. So, I mean, you know, even though he's doing the te- detective work, he's still kicking people's asses. Yeah, yeah, know? yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and then over time, like, yeah, I feel like the, de- the detective work's gone away, and the brawlers come back, and then in there, at some point, they decided Batman wouldn't kill, because the original the original stories, yeah. he was, like, carrying around guns and blasting people, oh, yeah. right? Yeah. So... It's totally straight out of the forties. Yeah. yeah. So, I don't know. I mean, we'll see. We'll see what the next Batman movie has to offer. We know it will happen. You know, if, if I guess you know, if if I'm a little more optimistic about it, I guess this is a way to introduce Batman into this new universe. Since they're saying that the Dark Knight trilogy is not part of this right. universe. Um, and then he could have his own movie, which is a little weird. That just kind of gives Batman a, a side role, which bugs me. But yeah. Um, but okay, so let's say that's what they do. Then then maybe they could uh, do like a long Halloween or something like that for the next Batman movie. Yeah. If they're just going to focus on Batman, um, something along those lines, you know, something that's been um, that has some of the cooler versions of the characters in it, like there's a really cool Catwoman in that one, right. you know, that, that type of thing. Maybe that's the way to go. Um, but, you know, I almost think, like, the Dark Knight Returns influence on this uh, upcoming movie is maybe just more in, in the, the hardened aspects of Batman. I mean, the costume looks all scarred up. Right. You know, I think it, maybe they're just trying to do, like, a hard-boiled Batman kind of thing, you know? Um, and that was the only reason, maybe, that they they're even referencing that um, that comic book because because when that's re- that's really when that started, you know, right. Frank Frank, um, Frank Miller. Miller did that. It really changed Batman a lot, and that's really the Batman we have nowadays is really from that. You know? Right, right. I mean, yeah, yeah, he he definitely brought in he he definitely uh, for I guess lack of a better term, he saved Batman from. The campy Campiness. '66 yeah. world that was created, yeah. and uh, you know, I grew up on the '66. You know, oh, I me too. I love it. I watch it I still. Them. I read that comic book where they. <laughs> have you read the Batman? No, I haven't comic read. Comic? I haven't oh, read it. I, I, I want to. I read it in the voices of the people. Even <laughs> the narrator. Rest, there's a narration going on in it. I read it in the voice of the narrator from the show. It's just. Awesome. It's amazing. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, and, and and they're finally releasing those on Blu-ray. They come out in November. November right. 11th, yeah. I believe. Yeah. Um. So obviously excited about that, and again, those 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 are the Batman. Now, for, when I was a kid, I want to say I got into Batman from Tim Burton's movie, and that led me into the '66 Batman series. 
Cool. You were talking about uh, what you'd seen first, Batman 66 or yeah. Tim Burton. Yeah. So, I, again, I, I mean, I think it's been 25 years now since uh, Batman came out. And I'm, like I said, I'm pretty sure I saw Batman in the theater first, and that led me to, to Adam West. Yeah. But I really don't, I don't know. Well, I, I definitely saw the 60s, the 60s uh, um, show before the Tim Burton show. In fact, I saw the 66 film um, with the Julie Newmar Catwoman um, in the, in a theater in Salt Lake City called The Cinema in Your Face. I think that was probably right when the Burton movie came out because it was in the late 80s. When did the Burton movie come out? Was it 89. 89. 89. Yeah, so I think you probably, they were showing it there because the Burton movie was coming out. Okay. So I may have even seen that in the theater, like in an actual <laughs> theater before the Burton movie, even though it was... Uh, like a double feature? Yeah. Well, no, no, it was uh, in an independent theater. Okay. Uh, and um, I think they were just playing it because the Burton movie was coming gotcha. out. And probably saw it before the Burton movie came out. But Well, that's too bad. They should have done it as a double feature. Oh, yeah. That, that would have been awesome. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, so, I, remember, I remember watching that with the shark repellent. Oh, yeah, the shark repellent. The shark repellent. <laughs> because of the submarine. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's hilarious. <laughs> that one had that one's awesome because it has you know the bat copter and right. just all kinds of stuff. Yeah, it's just ridiculous. And then when he's trying to get rid of the bomb, and it takes like five minutes for him yeah, to get rid of it. Yeah, it's just ridiculous. <laughs> Amazing though. But that's the Batman I grew up on. So to me, until um, the Burton movie came out, that was the Batman that I knew really. And right. I wasn't reading comic books at that period in my life. I read them a lot when I was a kid, um, but. Yeah, I probably stopped reading them in like 1984 um, for quite a while, and then the the Burton movies really kind of got me back into comic books again, really. Because after that, I, I read a few things, read The Watchmen, some other stuff right around then, mm -hmm. and it probably wouldn't I probably wouldn't have done that if it wasn't for the Burton movies, you know. And so I guess you know the last 25 years, that's the Batman that I've known, but I've always had this campy 60s Batman. Uh, in there as well. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I, I, again, the the, the camp '60s Batman I think is always going to have a, a place in my heart, and I I think it's going to be in a place in everybody's heart because that's the Batman that they remember. Yeah. You know, even even if you did see the Tim Burton one first, just like the whole holy whatever Batman, yeah. uh, and it's always Jump Jupiter. Yeah, something. always whatever is going on. <laughs> holy posters, Batman. What do you mean? You know, there's posters <laughs> on the wall. You know, it's like, yeah. Uh, uh, <laughs> so bad but so good so. it's amazing it you know it, it captures I mean I wasn't alive in the 60s but it captures what I think of the 60s other than the hippie stuff right it captures that I think perfectly yeah the campiness of it and it, it's just it's amazing I, I wonder you know in 25 years from now what people looking back at our interpretation of things in, in film what they'll think you can't even know you know <laughs> No, you're right. You're, well, you're, you're right, but at the, you know, if you look at 25 years ago, so 25 years ago, I mean, we had like Back to the Future, and yeah. you know, we had tons of great 80s movies, you know, Sixteen Candles, and and then you look at it now, you don't get those same quality films. So you might be able to measure it, but I think you're right. I think I think you might have to wait another 25 years and see what they think about. Yeah, it's hard us. to know. Yeah, uh, yeah and, and you know, you mentioned. 16 Candles, and which I don't really like that much. Back to the Future, I love. But for me, the 80s is all about, you know, Arnie movies. Yeah. You know, and, and that type of thing. And that's definitely changed a lot. Oh, yeah. I mean, yeah. You, the, I mean, I, I, the, the action, the action hero movie, I don't know if we really have that anymore. I, you know, the Expendables are kind of making fun of themselves. I mean, yeah. That's, that's the whole point of them. Yeah. Um, but I don't. I can't think off the top of my head if we have any like one action hero like we used to. No. Um, no, they're always in some sci-fi universe. Right. There's not like the uh, like a commando guy who right. came back and he's gonna save his daughter or, or Rambo something. Or, or Ram Yeah, exactly. They don't. We don't have that. Maybe because maybe because we don't think of war that way anymore. I don't know. I'm kind of getting way off this Batman thing, but I think it's related in, in the sense that um, you can see how the 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 interpretation of the characters have changed over time and it's kind of a product of of the the time you know of course yeah even the even the burton batman films were a little campy but you could see they were trying to update them for the right. for the updated 80s right to, to be a little bit more um 
not there weren't violent so much, but they're a little bit more. Um, uh, what's the word for a little bit more um, intense, right? Yeah. yeah, dark and intense. And you did have, I mean, and he did have Batman kill in those ones. Well, that's true. You know, I mean, yeah. not, not not necessarily directly. Yeah, well, the Joker, know, like yeah. the Joker, he he, yeah. you know, he put the the gargoyle on his leg, knowing that he wouldn't be able to hold on, and the Penguin, you know, he kind of used the Penguin's weapons against him, so. I don't know. I mean, he he does kill, but he doesn't pull out a, a Colt forty five and shoot him yeah. like, like the originals. But even then, I think that the Batman that we have an idea of, well, I don't kill, I don't kill. I don't think that that was necessarily the same as it was in nineteen eighty nine with with yeah. Tim Burton. I think that there was a little bit more. There is there is room to kill if needed. Yeah. You know, I wonder, because Superman in Man of Steel kills somebody, right? Um, which, that's against his character also, right. and they did it in the origin film. So it's a little bit interesting. I wonder what Batman will be like in this new movie, you know, is he going to be that same exact way? I mean, is he going to be like, uh, not, you know, have that as a, as a really important ethic for himself? I don't know. Yeah. Well, that, that's, but that's interesting. Thought. You know, but even with that, like you know, there is a lot of ang- there was a lot of anger about Superman killing in Man of Steel when he kills Zod. But if you look at Superman, you know, the Richard Donner's version of Superman too, yeah. or, or I guess I, I haven't seen the Richard Donner cut, so I don't think it's the same way. Um, I've only seen the theatrical. But he kills Zod in that. He throws his his cell phone, his you know, his suffocator. Yeah, his, whatever it is, is somehow he find, he pulls this magical. Was that ever in the comic books? Or was that I don't know. Weird I think movie? I think it's just something that they made up, but <laughs> I don't recall ever reading that in any no. of the comics. But yeah, he kills Zod and and the two the two generals or the two commanders in that as well. You know, Ursa. The, yeah, the, I mean, I don't remember the big guys. Well, I, I guess I guess she actually got killed by Lois Lane, right? Because she gets punched and she falls off off the the ledge in the Fortress of Solitude. But Batman definitely yeah. throws the the right, cell right. phone wrapping around the guy, and he falls. He's like, and then they, well, the other guy just dies, right? Because he thinks he can fly. He's all, and he falls down. <laughs> I want to go watch that again because it's funny because I I watched that so many times in the past, and I these scenes are like I'm catching glimpses of them glimpses of them in my head when you're saying them, but I don't remember the details there. It's weird. Yeah. To go back and watch it again, but um, definitely it wasn't obvious that he was like, you know, hey. I'm just gonna kill you guys to take care of my problem. It wasn't like that, right? You know? And I guess in in the uh, Snyder film, they they made it seem like he was forced, you know, um, which is a little silly the way they set it up because yeah. people are stuck in the corners. I'm sure he could have done something else, like get in front of the the, 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 the laser, laser vision, right. whatever you want to call it. But yeah, what hey, what do you think by about um, the 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 no kryptonite thing? And if that's if that's the case, then how is Batman going to? Uh... You know, I, you know, I wondered the same thing, and again, the question is how much how much of Batman versus Superman is actually going to be Batman versus Superman? Right, right. Like, are they just going to have a battle and they they realize that they have a common goal, even though they have a different approach to it? Or are they just going to backtrack and be like, well, we didn't introduce Kryptonite in the first movie? But we're gonna introduce it now. <laughs> that you would know? be funny. <laughs> because I, I also feel like I also feel like Batman versus Superman, and again, I don't I have no insider information on this, so I have no idea, but I'm just speculating that Man of Steel, although it did well, it didn't do as well as they wanted it to, and it got critically slammed. Yeah. And it was rotten on Rotten Tomatoes. Yeah, yeah. so I, I feel like Batman versus Superman was kind of a rushed deal. And I feel like it was kind of thrown to, like, it was like a last minute plan, like, oh, we didn't do as well as we needed to. We need something to ignite the excitement. Let's do what everybody wanted, has wanted for many, many years, and that's Batman and Superman in the same movie. Yeah. Let's do it. And I don't know if they thought about... Justice League. Yeah, Justice yeah. League. Mean, well, and I, well, I think Justice League was always a plan, but I don't know if, if the no kryptonite... Oh. Was part of I don't know if, plan. yeah I don't know if yeah. Zach had like the larger plan of yeah, doing Batman I versus bet, Superman I bet or, they didn't or if Zach was like I have a different idea than 
Yeah. Then and then Warner Brothers came along and said, "Sorry, Zach, you have to do Batman versus Superman." Although now. there was a Wayne Enterprises satellite yeah, in the movie, so it's they they were sort of implying that there was this larger universe, it's, you know, metahumans and superheroes or whatever. Right. So um, so maybe, yeah, I don't know, maybe it was. But I guess I guess the point is like, did they always intend to set it up as a Batman versus Superman, or did they? Because I think Justice League was always announced. I think, announced. I, think yeah. I think Justice League was always right. I don't think there's ever any question about Justice League that was going to happen. I remember at one point there was actually rumors that Ben Affleck was going to direct Justice League, and this was this was before he got signed on for for Batman. Um, but if if the goal was to do always to do a Justice League, then then that gave them the opportunity to introduce Superman and Batman as friends, rather than on combative yeah on a combative level where it seems that that's that's where they're going now, especially with the name of. Batman v, v Superman. Yeah. I don't know. We'll, we'll and then see. The, and then the, the subtitle of Dawn of Justice, which is obviously obviously leading to the Justice League. Yeah. So I don't think it's I don't think it's saying like the introduction of justice by the word. I think it's definitely a, a play on. No, I agree. We're setting this yeah. up as a prequel to the yeah. Justice League, especially when you've got Wonder Woman involved now. I mean, those and are Aquaman the, and yeah, Cyborg. And Aquaman. <laughs> right. I heard the Cyborg was in. It. Now, who's? Do you, is there any? Talk about his playing. There's cyborg. a name I, you know, I have to look it up. I right. I didn't recognize the name. I think name. I may have looked that up too, but um, that's an interesting character, I guess, because he's a part of the New Fifty Two Justice League so much. I mean, I guess it makes sense, but it's not like you watch the old Justice League stuff or read the old comics and see Cyborg. No, I mean, because Cyborg was part of Teen Titans, right? Isn't yeah, that where he came. I, from I don't know if that's where he came from, but it definitely was in Teen Titans. Yeah. So. Yeah, and then is Flash going to be in this? Or so, like, we I don't know. know we know we know that they're going to be in. We know that they're going to be in Justice League of America because you can't have that is Justice League to me, right? You got to have Superman, Batman, Wonder Woman, Flash, and Green Lantern, and maybe even John Jones. I don't know. Right, the, the Martian Marvin, Manhunter. Marvin Man, yeah. But yeah, and and then you've pretty much got what I think of as as the Justice League. You know. Yeah. So if they're interested, if they're introducing everybody now. And again, you know, AMC. There's an AMC movie talk, and and I apologize. I don't remember the guy's name who did it, but he was talking about how Guardians of the Galaxy proves that you don't have to do origin stories on every single hero, and why Justice League will work. Interesting. And and I agree to an extent. I think the problem that you have with not wanting to do backstories on Justice League characters. Is that you've already introduced a world where everybody was amazed and surprised about Superman. about Superman? Yeah. So if everybody is amazed and surprised about Superman and Batman, you don't need to worry about because Batman's just a vigilante, right? He's a vigilante, great detective, and hopefully they emphasize the the detective part. Um, he's human. Yeah, but he's a, he's a yeah. human, right? They they know that he's a human. They know that he's he's some guy who's dressing up like a bat going around and 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 fighting crime. So if Wonder Woman, Wonder Woman comes into the mix, is the world going to be like, oh, where did Wonder Woman come from? Or do they already know that she exists? And if they already know that she exists, then why were they so surprised about Superman? Yeah. When you already have another metahuman in the world. Uh, yeah. And again, if, if Flash comes along, if you introduce Flash and, and Green Lantern and, and Wonder Woman all at the same time, then it's either, oh, this is convenient, they're all showing up at the same time. Yeah. Which doesn't make it, which doesn't make any sense, or, or two, they've already been around and humans are already aware of them. In which case, they, why do they care so much about Superman when they already have these other meta humans in the world? Uh, that's that's why I feel that he's wrong, and I think that you do have to show some kind of origin point to these other characters because otherwise you just get all these characters that come out of nowhere, and the question is how and why no i agree so i think if you went you know character by character you know um whether or not it would make sense for them to be appearing in this film you know mm -hmm. so i think wonder woman you could get away with because they she just lives on the island i forget what it's called amazon is it called amazonia, yeah, amazonia or, something? or something yeah, yeah. Wh wherever her 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 people are from and and they just have hidden from the world and maybe the the appearance of superman is something that brings her out or some threat oh. to the world or something okay, okay. um Batman, you already talked about that. Yeah. We, we get away with that one. 
The Flash, I think he'd be okay because he could be covert, a covert version of the Flash. You know, he's so fast, nobody would know anyway. Maybe just he fixes things without people seeing it. So but, has he been fighting crime this whole time? Though, I, that's or? what I'm saying. I, I don't. I don't. I think you could. You could probably. It's a little bit of a reach, but you could probably get away with it. You know. Okay. And, but the Green Lantern. How right. would you do that? I mean, he's he's like so obvious. You know, like he's always. Um, making his constructs and you know it's right i don't know how you'd get away with having a green lantern that that uh just appeared so that's probably not in this movie but but uh i i'm i'm still struggling for how they would introduce him in a in the future justice league movie even if it's just like a couple years after this right yeah um in, in the timeline of the actual films and and then um aquaman you could get away with because he lives, just in, lives, the, in, the he lives ocean, in the ocean you know um Cyborg. I mean, maybe Cyborg is created as part of this whole thing, you know? Maybe um, it's a Lex Luthor thing gone yeah, wrong. There, yeah, well, and that's kind of how it is, right? Isn't he, isn't he, the, there's um, some kind of, uh, uh, what is it called, nanobites that in, invade his body? I think there's these nanobite things that get into him and they make him stronger. Okay. Yeah, it's, yeah it's, I mean, I, I don't yeah. know much about Cyborg. I don't, I don't either. I've read a little bit about him, but... Um, so you could probably make that make his creation part of this the show, the okay. movie, you know, instead of having him have having been around. So I mean, so in Justice League, but in Justice League, you'd have to introduce Green Lantern. Green Lantern's a tough one, and you'd have to like, you should introduce Marvin Man or Martian Manhunter. Yeah, I hope he's in it. I hope he's in it. Is, yeah. is that rumored or not? I don't know if they've even yeah. talked about Justice League rumors. I think yeah. right now it's still just Batman versus yeah. Superman rumors. But we know that we know that they're shooting back to back. So it's like once they're once they're done shooting BBS, they're immediately going right. to JLA. Right. Well, Martian Manhunter, you know, if it, it depends on. I don't know much about his different the different takes on his origin, but if it's the one where um, he 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 gets he ends up here by accident, you know, and then he um, he's stuck. And so he kind of like watches TV and, and, and that kind of stuff to okay. learn how to be a human, you know? <laughs> I okay. think he might become a detective or something like that. I don't remember all the details. Um, but, you know, maybe he's just living his life as a detective and nobody knows who he, who he is. Mm-hmm. And then all this stuff is happening. And so then he comes out of the woodwork, too. All, it gets a little weird at some point if you just have all these characters coming out of the woodwork right. because of this, you know? Right, I mean, that, that's kind of yeah. my point, too. It, it's, yeah. it's, again, it goes back to how and why yeah you know why would why you know and i think you know i've had this argument with other people too and they bring up watchmen as an example of why you don't need to have an origin story but you know the the thing with watchmen is they already watchmen the, has an origin story in it yeah i mean watchmen yeah. a has an origin story in it and at yeah. the very beginning with the title sequence it, it already establishes that this is a world of yeah of superheroes so when it already starts with the the comedian getting thrown out the window it's it's already been established that the comedian's been around for a long time uh even though there's no words you know it's just it's, again it's just a montage of of clips from the from history mm-hmm. you know to to you know bob dylan's music yeah but you you know what's going on and in those clips you also see like there are some superheroes that got like they got shot yeah. Some that were taken off and, and taken into an insane asylum. Their capes get caught in yeah, revolving I mean, doors. <laughs> or was that was that just the it, comic book? No, that was, that was in the movie, movie too. Yeah, yeah, that was in the that was in the, okay. the intro. The dollar. What was that character's name? The, the dollar. I don't remember. Or I don't remember. It wasn't in the movie really. No, they yeah. they they only show it in the montage at the beginning yeah. when they're showing the clips and they show like the photos of like yeah. them, the team starting up and then right. the team kind of falling apart, uh, and then that's when they implement like the no superhero law in right. the world but yeah. again you 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 know you get that establishment and again this goes back to you if they just did justice league i don't think that it would be as as questionable as far as how they're going to pull it off but i think the problem is that they did man of steel yeah totally no i get it they, they, they introduced man of steel yeah. as an origin yeah. so it's like how do you how do you make the justice league how without you giving it, yeah without giving an origin to everybody else yeah. if they would have just done the justice league to begin with it'd be fine yeah and you're just saying boom there you go right yeah i totally get it um unless you know maybe ju- maybe maybe batman versus superman is a few years down the line or something too 
I don't know. It's still, then you're you're still. I don't know. I I think I'm giving them too much benefit of the doubt. No, I think no, they're I mean, they're kind of screwed. I, I <laughs> <laughs> and again, I mean, yeah. I haven't seen the script, so the script might all make sense. Yeah. I don't know. I don't know. Um, who wrote it though? Did did uh? uh I don't what's, think... his, what's his name wrote it? Right, the blade guy. Why can't I think of his name? The tattoo guy. I don't know if Goyer wrote Goyer, this one. Yeah. I know. Did, did Go- he not? I thought he I don't did. think so. Oh. I know he wrote mm. Man of Steel. Huh. But I don't what? think I don't think he wrote what Batman about, versus Superman. What about Chris Nolan's brother? Is he involved at all? Not that I've seen. Yeah. I think I think Jonathan Nolan was Jonathan. only yeah I think he was only involved with Man of Steel also. Yeah. And again, Man of Steel wasn't bad. I mean, it, it, you know, it had a different take. It. But you know, I think there's definitely a lot of things wrong with it too. And I think you know, fans. I mean, we can, we're not going to go and rehash a movie that was released a year and a half ago because yeah. I think every single fan on the internet's already rip that movie apart oh yeah <laughs> I think we're already behind the times by me even discussing Comic Con from two weeks ago right yeah <laughs> uh, so what else this week they released the trailer for the new Silent Hill I believe oh yeah Did you, so yeah, I think I was showing you a few minutes ago the uh, they have this kind of a, what I think is actually a pretty good uh, advertising campaign where they show these uh, I think they're like middle aged and older Japanese women uh, in the dark playing the trailer or playing the uh, playing demo, the demo yeah. yeah and just showing their reactions and it shows very very little of the gameplay although I think you can download the demo to, to play it I'll, I haven't seen it yet but um, and it just shows their reactions it's it's incredibly funny I think they're just they're just totally scared out of their minds um, and I know there's a few people involved in this one that that excites me I haven't liked Silent Hill for a long time at least not the games you know yeah um, and, and so it'd be really good, I think, if they had a new Silent Hill that was um, that was fun and scary to yeah. play again. You know, I think that's what they're going for based on this trailer showing these these women freaking out playing the game. See, so. I mean, and I've only played the first two Silent Hills. I only played Silent Hill one, Silent Hill two. Yeah. Um, I haven't played any of the other ones. I've heard. I, I think it was four. It was called the Room or something like that. Something I heard like that. that one was good. Yeah. Was it good? Uh, what people I liked it. Yeah, mm-hmm. but I, I don't really know too much. Like I said, I haven't really played any of the Silent Hill movies uh, or games. Uh, Norman Reedus is the the capture in yeah the new Silent Hill right uh, game, and I don't know from from the the three seconds of hallway that you get to see i mean it looks, yeah. it looks great i mean the the atmosphere is definitely there and with the ladies reactions i think it's probably there but again they're also older ladies so they might yeah, just be no, totally yeah they might just be jumpy because oh and i'm sure that i'm sure if they weren't if the, if people were playing it and it didn't affect them that way they just wouldn't show that as part right, of the trailer right, so right so I, I think if they had yeah. like a bunch of like young adults or you know yeah. late teens playing it their reactions might be different so the yeah. game might be looking scarier than it, it actually is i don't know yeah uh, I, I like th- that Guillermo del Toro's involved yeah. you know um he's got he's got a good guiding hand with these types of things i think and um i think th- my point is just that this type of advertising campaign mm-hmm. I, I think it just it hints that that's what they're kind of going for right. and so that that makes me hopeful we'll see i haven't played one in a long time because i haven't cared about them anymore but right. um you know i used to love survival horror and if they can make me scared again i'll jump right back in yeah i mean and, and you know it's the same with the resident evil games too you know totally. the, the 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 first two resident evil games are awesome especially the first one the first one was yes. amazing yeah. uh and then you know three was kind of weak in my opinion uh, but it was still in that same that same original night when the virus gets out and, and you know all hell breaks loose. Four was a great game, Resident Evil Four, which came out uh, ten years ago. But it wasn't it wasn't survival horror. It was more of an action. Yeah. You know, it was, it was more of an action shooting game with the you know the occasional puzzles and you had these different types right. of zombies. Yeah. Uh, they're re remastering the original. Resident Evil. Again, if you remember, they they remastered it for the GameCube like twelve years ago. GameCube. Yeah, uh, but they are re remastering it for I want to say the PlayStation for the like PlayStation hmm. Three, the PlayStation probably the PlayStation Four. I'd have to you know, I should look it up. I should be a little bit more prepared for for this discussion, but it wasn't really planned. It just kind of happened. Yeah. Uh, and then there's speculation that the reason that they're doing that is to 
to get fans excited again for for survival horror and then possibly make the next Resident Evil more like it's more like it's roots rather than where it's gone where it's become like this action shooter yeah I mean the movies kind of yeah. screwed it all up well, the, think, movie, you know, yeah, the movies yeah, kind of maybe dragged it along <laughs> into that I don't know but yeah you know I enjoyed the f- I enjoyed the first movie the first one's great uh, every single one of the other ones is stupid yeah I mean well introducing power her having magical powers made no sense because it's just like why would you do that you know yeah and then anyway, one, yeah, yeah, just, let's, yeah let's not go there yeah let's not go there <laughs> Uh, but speaking of Del Toro, he's an H.P. Lovecraft fan, yeah. and I think H.P. Lovecraft has a birthday Yeah, I think it's his up. birthday in three days. I think it's on the 20th, August 20th. Uh, today's, what, the 17th that we're recording? Yep, so 17th. Yeah, so three days from now, one of my favorite all-time authors, H.P. Lovecraft, um, will be <laughs> celebrating his birthday from beyond. Happy birthday, H.P. Lovecraft. Yeah. You know, the thing about Lovecraft, too, in the last few years... The whole Cthulhu mythos thing has really just kind of started to kind of like get this groundswell, you know. It's almost like um, it's almost like the the uh, outer elder things in in the in the mythos themselves trying to break through into our reality, and it's actually starting to work. Right. You know, they're actually starting to get in. It's pretty cool. You see references in all kinds of stuff now, and some of it's kind of dumb, like the, the you know the cutesy stuff. Although. Because of that, you know, it, it makes it more accessible and and, uh, and available. And so I, I, I'm kind of for it. I'm a little bit worried that in about five years or three or four years maybe that, myth, you know, Cthulhu mythos type stuff is as prevalent as the zombie thing. And the zombie thing's starting to get stupid right now. So yeah. I'm, I'm a little concerned. But we'll see. I mean, I, I could, I, I mean, you know, that's the thing is once something becomes a hit, you milk it. For all its worth, that's right. And that's kind of that's kind of what we do here in in our society. Yeah, you know, and businesses will make money, and, and comic book publishers in Hollywood will make movies, and and uh, yeah. I mean, you know, it's great again think, from the accessibility point of view, but then yeah, it just it kind of uh, devalues it. You know what I right. mean? Yeah. But that's okay. I'm willing to... I'll take that, actually. For um, HP. Yeah, for HP. In order to get more um, more well-done movies and stuff, because all of the HP Lovecraft movies, well, I shouldn't say all of them, a lot of them are just stupid movies, you know? Um, if you watch something like The Dome Witch Horror from the 70s, it's just a stupid movie. But, um, you know, there's a few gems there, like Reanimator and right. Dagon and a few like that, you know? And Guillermo del Toro talking again about making... Um, at the Mountains of Madness, you know, which would be just epic, epic Lovecraft film. So we'll see. Is he still talking? I thought he was actually moving forward on it. Yeah, well, I, I think, well, the last thing I read was a couple of weeks ago, and he was talking again that it was something they Going were working to on. Happen. Yeah. Where, whereas, um, oh, I don't know, last year or something, at some point he had said that it was stalled out because uh, it was too similar to the Alien prequel. Um, which, by the way, is the whole point here, is that there's a lot of movies out there that have used Lovecraft um, and even specifically at the Mountains of Madness as source material in one way or another, or at least as an influence. Um, and it's about time they just make the actual right. story, you know? Well, why, why do that when we can just make adaptations and inspiration? Yeah, and it's, yeah. Yeah, I well, don't know. Do and I it. think one of the snags before too was Del Toro was unwilling to make a PG thirteen movie. He he was really adamant about making a, a rated R movie, and you're talking like probably like a hundred million dollar budget or something. Okay. So that that becomes a, a, a turn off, I think, for the the studios. <laughs> for studios, yeah. Right. And but I think he's kind of given a little leeway on that now, or given in a little bit, and um, and and starting to talk about it as a PG thirteen movie, which. I'm actually totally fine with, you know, because a lot of a lot of Lovecraftian themes are, are horrifying because of what you do with them in your own mind, as opposed to what is described to you, you know. Yeah. And so that I think, as long as it's done right, I think that might even make a better movie, you know. See, I don't like, and, and I don't know. I mean, I don't know if I don't know if ratings really matter, like a. You know what I mean? Like, does a, does a MPAA rating really matter? Uh, I mean, other than like an NC seventeen, just because theater chains refuse to to even carry them. 
but well last last thing last time I read about this I read a book a while back called Super Crunchers and it went well into what you can make on certain kinds of movies and where why they why they try to right. shoot certain ratings and the the audience is literally like a third the size for a rated R movie as it is for a PG-13 movie and so yeah you, you can expect to make a lot less money off of a rated R movie but okay I get but but something like a uh, HP Lovecraft film Right, I, I think, I don't think that, you know, mom and dad are going to take little Billy to go see that on a Sunday afternoon. If it's PG thirteen, you're saying? Yeah, I mean, I, I think I think it's still marketed to a specific group of people. I mean, well, look, the thing is, is if little Billy's thirteen, he can go by himself right. to it's PG thirteen movie. It didn't so, even enforce that. Like, I, I, I mean, know. you know what I mean? Like, I was going to PG-13 movies when I was, like, 10 oh, by totally, myself. Totally. Like, yeah, totally. Yeah. You know, other than, like, you know, the parents would drop us off, and we'd, like, all five, you know, it, five or six of us, all 10 years old, would walk up and buy our, our tickets to, like, Ninja Turtles yeah. or whatever. It didn't matter in my family, anyway, because my dad had just sneaked me into the... Yeah, I, mean, I mean... When I say sneak, sneak me from my mom into those <laughs> kinds of movies, anyway. Yeah, know? and my parents would take me to rated R movies, so, like, yeah. that was never, like, a... It yeah. was never, like, this... But there were many times that... We would. We would go see... Or we'd just go jump on the bus and go down and go to the movie by ourselves. Different time. 1980s. Completely different time. Totally. (laughs) But I don't... The rating had no bearing on if I was going to go or not. You know, like if I wanted to see a movie, I was going to go see the movie. I don't think that, you know, something like, you know, Halloween or Friday the 13th or any of those movies, I don't think that they're going to make any more money if they go with a PG-13 rating and in fact I would argue that those movies would probably lose money yeah no I agree but I also don't think that would be a hundred million dollars yeah I guess you got a point that, yeah, I, I, and I, I guess that's what it comes down to is the return on the investment I guess if they're know. really wanting to put a yeah. hundred million into an H.P. Lovecraft film yeah. then and I you kind of have to because that that story's epic right I mean you've got huge monsters yeah you know, you know and if, if they if they did it in, in, on a cheap shoestring budget it would just fail yeah, and then they're really not going to make money. <laughs> uh, and the, the unless of, it's cheap enough that they can make their money back in one after, in one yeah, afternoon. Yeah, right, right. They shoot it on found, some found footage bull crap. <laughs> Which you know what? I could see them doing that with that movie. I know Gil- Guillermo del Toro wouldn't do that, but thank goodness he's the one wanting to do it because I could see somebody else trying right. to pull that off, and that would just be damn annoying. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> So anyway, yeah, it's it's good to see that stuff is um, is uh, you know working its way into the uh, the mainstream consciousness here, and 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 it's been there trying to break through from the other side. You know, I'd like to put it that way because of the, the material right. break through from the other side into our world for a long time, and it's actually starting to to break in. So it's kind of cool. It's fun, but well. What else? Is that it for today? I think that's going to be it okay. for today. All right. Well, we've got lots of stuff to talk about in the future, for yeah, sure. I think we've gone... I think we had quite a bit today, too, though. Yeah. And we, you know, so... Anyway, uh, thanks for listening. We are going to post this. If you have any questions or you want to email us, I, you can get me on Twitter. I'm at Eric Preston. Lee, you are... Drift Workshop. D-R-I-F-T-W-E-R-K-S-H-O-P. Yeah. So that's our Twitter <laughs> handles. And uh, comment below this will be on youtube until we can actually get on to uh podcasting yep so comment below tell us what you liked what you didn't like what you want to hear if you have any questions that you want us to talk about next time feel free to hit us up until next time goodbye <laughs> goodbye